Here is part one of JL Innovative Designs Rebel Stock Pick and Shovel, which I worked on starting January 11th through the 18th. And that was the last day that I worked on it. And I'll be starting again soon, probably this weekend. So I just wanted to get this out here and show you what I have accomplished so far on it. And just about to start on the newest kit, JL Innovations uh, Pick and Shovel. I think, yeah, Pick and Shovel. Yeah. So here it is right here. I just opened it up. I've had this for quite some time. There is everything right there. All the wall panels are already removed, so you don't have to worry about that. I'll be putting some bracing on it. There's some bracing right here and some other pieces of wood. So end bracing and uh, interior wall bracing. So uh, I'll get started on this in the morning. We just came back from Fort Myers. Debbie had a doctor appointment there. So we're a little bit tired from all that driving. Two hours up, two hours back doctor appointment she stopped at the thrift store and then we uh, ate at miller ale house so this thing's got uh, a lot of white metal castings a lot of uh, picks and shovels uh, forklifts crates an exhaust fan a chimney uh, some other stuff and a lot of uh, look like titchy uh, windows and doors there's a catwalk right there and here's another door not sure who makes that one not sure if that doesn't look like a titchy but that uh, might be uh, grant line or something like that but uh, rolled tar paper, you got to cut it in strips yourself. And then here's the metal roof. And then here's the, I guess this is the roof right here. And it's right here. I guess that's a cutout for a window. I guess you put this behind one of these somewhere and uh, put your windows in there. So we'll see what the instructions say. So excited to get started with this and earlier today before we left i opened up this one here this uh northeastern scale model one and you can see that i closed it back up because once i got all the pieces out there i realized that that this is n scale okay nowhere on here on any it says ho scale but <laughs> That building looks really, really small. But it says HO scale, but I don't believe it's HO. So the the the, the building is real small. The pieces are real small in there. So I just noticed that it says HO, but uh, <laughs> it looked really small. And everything that I looked up, there are no longer in business. But uh, the only ones that I've seen. Walters had them, and uh, Mike Pfeiffer did a uh, report on it. They were both N scale. So, even though it says it's HO, it looks real small. So, I might take another look at it. Who knows? But I'm going to do this JL Innovation ones. Page one, page three. And page two. That's it. And then here is a brief explanation on both sides. So that's all you get with the with the kit right there. So it's going to be interesting. I've never done a JL Innovation kit before. I have this one, and I have another one too. So we'll do this one, and the other one is a gas station. Uh, so. That'll, that'll come up next sometime, or somewhere in, in my kits. 
I laid out all the walls to try to figure out how this thing went together, and I just couldn't couldn't figure it out because I haven't seen a picture on this for a while because uh, I lost the cover of it, and so I had to look through all my stash over here where all that stuff is, and I finally found the cover, and I have it right up here, so let me show you what it is. It is it's an unusual building, and that's what threw me off because of this right here, this little corridor right there. Uh, <laughs> And this bump out, and then there's also a bump out in the back, as you can see right there. So now I have it figured out because these are the pieces right here. Now it tells you to put uh, the supports on these two here, but I'm also going to put the support on this one because these are the two edge pieces right here. And then all these other ones fit in between it. And then this one is on the end, but it doesn't tell you to put any br interior bracing on this. But I'm going to put the embracing on it, be mainly because whenever you put two walls together at a 90 degree angle, it's easier to put them together when there's interior bracing. You put the interior bracing flush over here. So the other wall just goes right up against it and you glue it in place. And then you put the corner piece on the outside. The corner piece is a sixteenth of an inch. It goes out here. It's the same thickness as the walls. So that works out like that. So I'm about to cut the uh, bracing. We go one, two, three, four on that one, one, two, three on this one, and I'm going to put them on here on the outside, and I'm going to put them also right in here where this these interior walls goes because this this one goes like right here on the bottom, right there, let's see, right there, and then this one goes up here and the same thing on this side here this one let me see if I got this right <laughs> this is short let me look at the picture here yeah this uh, fits like this right there that goes up on the top and then this one this little short piece right here goes on the bottom right here. So there's like a gap. There's a roof and a catwalk. And then this sits behind. And this is like that right there. So this door right here is sits back from everything else. And it is covered by a roof. That's what threw me off to begin with. So I got it all straightened out now. We're ready to go. I decided to do the trim for this building the same color as the walls in red. And then I, it bugged me about uh, the window color. I was just going to leave it the, the dark gray primer, which uh, looked pretty good. But uh, then we went to Ace Hardware. Uh, this morning. Ace is the place. This is, uh, I think it's Colonial Blue. It's satin and it goes on really thick. <laughs> so as you can see right there in that uh, loading dock door. But uh, I think I'll, that'll look pretty good because uh, they have a, like a dark Oh, well, I guess the dark gray on there, but uh, I think my color will look better. So we we got it, we got it going. Uh, waiting for this to dry. I just uh, hit this with the primer, the red primer, and uh, I got all the uh, signage on 
the walls I think that's all I'm going to put on there on those four walls there I'm going to leave the other ones bare because uh, a lot of windows and uh, a lot of things going on on that stuff so we'll leave those alone I installed the windows on all the panels as you can see right here and I put on some of them, I used the supplied uh, sheets of uh, clear plastic. And on others, I put, you can see right here, I used the uh, frosted, uh, well, actually, it's not the frosted. It's supposed to come out clear, but when you don't put anything up against it, it looks like frosted windows. And the reason I did that is because some of these openings in here for the doors and the windows we're a little bit oversized so that's what we have to work with there and that'll still look good it look you know gives an appearance of the dirty windows this is in the back and this is all clear but you can see how what a messy job that I did trying to glue these into place these these are two two different panels right here and I ended up getting glue <laughs> on the uh, clear plastic when I glued it in place but it didn't show it you know it shows up on there well that's okay because this is a factory and windows get dirty so <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's my excuse <laughs> part two will be coming up as soon as I finish it so wish me luck <laughs> until the next time we'll see ya